This is our Pichachka presentation by Belinda Caldwell and Kimberly Windles. Our ultimate goal is to see a pregnancy successfully through its normal course with a healthy mother and baby. As midwives, we need to be aware and identify when the needs of our patients require additional supportive interventions. Midwives care for the low-risk pregnancy population. However, we are trained to recognize and intervene in high-risk situations as well. In the event that a patient presents with trauma, we are trained to initiate care while awaiting high-risk consult. Trauma affects up to 7% of all pregnancies. Trauma is also the leading cause of non-obstetric maternal deaths. Car accidents are almost half of all trauma that affect pregnant women. Motor vehicle collisions account for the great majority of blunt trauma in pregnancy. Maternal death is the major cause of fetal death following a motor vehicle collision. Ejection from the vehicle and associated head trauma are correlated with poor fetal outcome. In general, it is believed that airbags in combination with proper positioning of three-point restraints across the maternal pelvis provide the greatest protections to the mother and unborn child. A safety issue we need to talk to pregnant women about in the office is not only whether they wear their seatbelt, but whether they wear it correctly. Remember, the greatest number of patients affected by trauma in pregnancy are motor vehicle accidents. We need to tell our patients that women that use seatbelts decrease their maternal mortality from 33% to 5% just by wearing their seatbelt. Penetrating trauma are rare wounds to deal with in pregnancy. These wounds are noted for the discrepancy in maternal and fetal diagnoses. Up to 60% of these cases, fetal demise is reported. The most common causes of penetrating trauma in the pregnant patient are gunshot and stab wounds. The gravid trauma victim is unique in the pattern of injury sustained. The upper abdomen is the most common site of the stab wounds in the pregnant patient. The maternal death rate in penetrating trauma is two-thirds lower than in non-gravid patients secondary to the protective effects of the uterus on other abdominal organs. Several risk factors have been linked to obstetric trauma. These include younger age, drug use, alcohol use, and domestic violence. Pregnancy itself is an identified risk factor. Physical abuse in pregnancy occurs in as many as 10% of pregnant women, frequently resulting in blunt abdominal trauma. Instigators to physical abuse or drug and alcohol use by the perpetrator as well as the victim. Assault. Don't make excuses. Help make it stop. It says what part we are to play when we find a patient we care for is part of violence. One tool being used now across the nation as an identifier is the PRAM survey, Pregnancy Risk Assessment Monitoring System. It includes questions regarding whether the woman has been hit, kicked, slapped, punched, or verbally abused by her current or past partners. Women experiencing intimate partner violence both prior to and during pregnancy may be more likely to delay entry into prenatal care. These women are also at increased risk for multiple poor maternal and fetal health outcomes. Pregnancy and complications such as low maternal weight gain, infections, high blood pressure, and vaginal bleeding are significantly higher among abused women. In addition, women who experience violence prior to or during pregnancy are more likely to deliver preterm or low birth weight infants. Burns in pregnancy are a small percentage of the whole picture in pregnancy. There are almost 12 million people a year that become pregnant. When thought of in this way, 1% becomes a bigger number. Use precautions when cooking. Handles inwards, aprons, hot pads, medium cooking temperatures. Avoid grease cooking when able. Blunt trauma in pregnancy. A complication of blunt trauma can be delayed placental abruption. Abruption has been reported up to six days post-trauma. Uterine blood flow is 5 to 700 milliliters a minute to give you an idea of the rate at which these patients can lose blood. Lab work assists in gathering of knowledge to help understand the seriousness of the patient injuries. Connolly and colleagues write that when monitoring is normal and there is no complaint of abdominal pain or bleeding, there is usually no adverse outcome. Presence of contractions, bleeding, positive Clyharabecki, abdominal or uterine tenderness or vaginal bleeding, 
transversely does not necessarily mean an adverse pregnancy outcome. We monitor from 4 to 48 hours depending on the presence of pain or bleeding. Here's an algorithm that may assist in the care of pregnancy after blunt trauma and some types to the abdomen. You're going to take a extensive history and physical examination, laboratory work to include a CPC, BMP, coags, chi type and screen, electrolytes, glucose, assessment of the fetal heart rate and uterine activity, a prenatal ultrasound, additional radiologic studies if indicated such as x-rays or CT scan, and lastly a peritoneal lavage if indicated. Ultrasound allows for examination of gestational age, placental location, amniotic fluid index, and biophysical profile. Ultrasound allows for recognition of subchorionic hemorrhage or retroplacental clots, recognition of abruption as well as problems with spleen and liver injuries. Ruptured uterus has been linked to abdominal trauma. It is possibly one of the most life-threatening emergencies in obstetrics. Uterine rupture caused by trauma can occur at any gestation. Rupture is more likely to occur with direct abdominal impact. The uterine rupture complication is associated with maternal and fetal mortality rates. These rates are 10% for moms and up to 100% for the fetus. Pelvic fractures. Falls are the most common cause of this type of injury. Motor vehicle accident is also a cause of this type of injury. The pelvis is made up of three bones, two innominent bones, each made up of an ilium, ischium, and pubis, and a sacrum. Stability is provided by the sacroiliac joints and the sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligaments. ACOG states that the exposure to x-ray to the fetus is minimal with this type of x-ray and should not be of concern. Here's our ultimate goal. Healthy mom, healthy baby. We want them to go home together and safely and healthy to be a part of a family unit. Thank you to those who have gone before us and continued in the study of health and treatments in pregnancy.